The Mac Mini 2025 M4 model has a ton of value. They finally upped it to 16 gigabytes of RAM right off the bat, uh, but there's a couple major issues with it. This is my Mac Mini. This is the base Mac Mini. It cost me like under 700 Canadian dollars, which is very impressive. Uh, you get two, two uh, USB-C on the front there, a few on the back, of course, Thunderbolt 4 in this case. Uh, HDMI, you get Ethernet there, uh, and then you get power. Cute little package like that. Now there's one primary issue with it. It doesn't have enough storage, 256 on the base. It's useless. It's actually useless. If you just use this as like a browsing PC, sure, you just plug it in, you just do your browsing. But let's say you're gonna do some video editing. Um, one singular of my videos, one singular of them, can easily be 100 gigabytes, easily. Anyways, not an issue anymore. B-Link, B-Link makes mini PCs. They're specialists, I mean good mini PCs. This is the Mate Mini. What makes the Mate Mini very interesting here is that inside you end up getting two, you can't see them, but there are two NVMe slots in there. So you can add two storage devices. So I'm able to take my Mac Mini, connect these to each other. I go from uh, 256 gigabytes of storage. In this case, I have four terabytes in here, two and two. You also get more ports. You get USB-A ports, which are critical. I don't know why also Apple thinks that those are gone. Apple just wants things to happen and they don't happen necessarily. And also you get an SD card. The biggest selling feature of this is not just that you're expanding the ports, which is still sweet, especially the USB-A. It's the fact that it has two NVMEs inside of it, active cooling, and it's super sleek. Okay, so here is a look at the actual website here. We can see the B-Link Mate Mini, 80 gigabit per second dock for Mac Mini M4. Now there's two variants. We have the Model A and the Model B. They look exactly the same. You can get them with or without storage. Looks like they do pair them with some nice crucial storage, so that's good. But I'll show you the difference between the two models here. Uh, we have the Model A and Model B. One of them here you can see is an 80 gigabit per second transfer rate. What does that mean? That means you're going to get USB 5 speeds. Only Mac uh, M4 Pro chips have that. I do have one now, but at the time of recording, I did not. Um, so you get potentially like five or 6,000 megabytes a second transfer speed there. However, you're limited to one singular drive. So you can get one NVMe, but it's gonna run real fast, Gen 5 speeds. The other option here, it doesn't say, it says, says USB-C interface. You end up with two NVMe drives in here. And the difference is here, rather than getting that 6,000 to, to eight or whatever, you're gonna end up with USB four speeds. You get 80 gigabits per second for the overall you know, single drive, or you can get it split between two. Uh, you can see right here, they call it speed oriented. So speed oriented, you can see you can get one NVMe in there and it's gonna run at eight gigabit, uh, it's gonna run at 80 gigabit per second speeds. So if you have an M4 Pro, it's a good pick if you want one very large drive and you want it to run at max speed, basically. If you have an M4, not Pro, uh, or you just value more storage, um, like in this case here, you can get this one, get two drives in there, and you'll see how fast it runs during this test. And they do run at USB 4, USB 4 versus USB 5. Okay, so here's a look inside. It's pretty straightforward to get open. Um, this was in here, like that, and like that. So you just flip it over, you take off the feet. One, two, three, four. Open that up. And then you get inside here. Now this is not the type of like, it's not an enclosure, an enclosure like ugh, something like this that you're gonna be just swapping in and out constantly, or you just open it up and swap drives in as needed. That's not what this is. This is more of a permanent solution. I mean, it's not actually permanent. You can change it as you want, but it's something that you're probably gonna put in your drives and you're gonna leave them in there um, because they offer you know massive increase in performance and that. Now, um, you'll basically put this in here like that. I'm going to put in two drives. Uh, this plugs back into here. And then once they're in here, I mean, you're probably not constantly swapping your drives. I mean, you could if you wanted. Why? This is uh, how it set it up. Now, one of these drives is for video editing because the Mac Mini is like, the real value on the Mac Mini is the base, right? So one of them is going to be on the, uh, one of them is going to be for video editing. Why can I not speak? And the other one is going to be for, I don't know, games and stuff, I guess, just whatever. Okay, we'll put that back on. This rubber, or foam piece here, goes towards the direction of the thing. So that just goes back there. I mean, that's basically it, right? Where's my little dongle? I'm gonna plug this in because I want to have access to my mouse and keyboard. I don't like Bluetooth because it's unreliable. Okay, so there it is. It looks like a little burger. Little burg. 
Okay, so there we go. First things first, the USB-A works. Isn't that funny? Isn't that a thing that people still want? Now, most importantly, we have access to, I mean, there's two important things. One, <laughs> no same keyboard. I don't have to worry about Bluetooth disconnecting and being an effing nightmare. That's a big win for me. The other thing is, um, I mean, it looks cool. That looks like a burger. We do get access to SD card. You can pop in there and work directly off that. It's funny because Mac users are like, not always. I mean, a lot of them are just whoever's, but I mean, a lot of Mac users are actually creative types, right? And so creative types are going to want to have um, potentially SD card if they're, you know, YouTubers or if they are uh, graphic designers or photographers or anything like that. A lot of those people want Macs because they're clean, simple setups. And it's funny to me that then those people, I mean, they are probably recording on an SD card or micro SD card and they can't use it because they have to then get a dongle. Why didn't Apple put a freaking SD card on it? I don't know. Anyways, now the more important thing is the two storage here. So we have uh, two times NVMe. We'll just come in here. We'll go like this. This will be a very simple video here in terms of it either works or doesn't work. I was going to write disk the wrong way. So we have our Mac storage with a Peasley, measly, beasley 245 gigabytes of storage. I have nothing installed on this computer. Uh, it's a fresh install. And um, yeah, 196. So we're using 50 gigabytes right off the bat. So I can put maybe, maybe two of my videos on here. Isn't that stupid? Uh, anyways, but that's not a problem because now I have these. So I have Mac storage and two, the first NVMe, two terabyte NVMe. And I have the second one. This one's empty. This one has some videos on it. So we'll come over here. I'm able to massively, massively expand. Um, this one here has some video editing stuff. There's probably not anything on here. There's nothing on here yet, uh, but there will be. And then I have a Steam library because I was testing some games. So imagine that people would potentially want to play games on a Mac. Isn't that insane? With this powerful M4 that has a great iGPU that's capable of gaming, yeah, people would potentially want to play games. But there's no storage. You can't you can't play games on a Mac because there's no freaking storage. You have to pay a fortune to get it. What are you gonna pay a thousand dollars to upgrade your Mac so you can play some games? No. You're gonna get a B link, buddy. Uh, and then video editing. I'm gonna have video editing on here. So um yeah, I guess we can kind of just pr proceed. Uh, we'll come in here, and I don't know. Is this a video that I was working on? I've already done it. That's fine. One, two, three, four. That's a big one. Four gigabytes. Look how quick that was. This is also an NVMe speed, by the way, so it's fast. Um, look at that. Now, all of a sudden, I can do video editing again because I actually have, like, room. So I'll just eject that. Now, Macs come with very powerful iGPUs, which allows them to do things such as video editing. Uh, I think a lot of people buy Macs for purposes like this, like video editing, graphic design, and that, because they're just good. They, they have a very powerful iGPU. They're very efficient. Uh, they're just generally good, right? And now I can actually do it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I actually have room now. I can come in here. I can actually have room on my Mac. I don't have to fill up my Mac completely. I can come in here and I can export directly from this back to that source. I'm gonna show you something else. So we have our disk speed thing, internal Mac storage, internal Mac storage, the 256 that comes with it. Okay, 4.5 and 3.5. Uh, we'll come over here, internal, it's slower here. This program sometimes over exaggerates. Read, yeah, so you're getting shy of 3000 megabytes a second, depending on which one you go with, whatever. You're getting around Gen 3 light type speeds. It's okay, okay? Now let's look at one of these. It doesn't matter which one, we'll just pick this one. There's two different formats here, APFS and XFAT. This one I can switch between different devices. This one I cannot, right? Very quick. That's Thunderbolt 4 speeds. It depends, like they're not always gonna be Thunderbolt 4. But look at that, 3000 megabytes a second, three gigabytes. That's USB 4 speeds. That's fast, 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 fast. If you're getting yourself uh, like a basic USB dongle, like a little, you know, you're working off of some, I don't even have anything around here, some basic little USB thing, they're not gonna get even remotely that fast. That's what this is important. It's basically as quick as the internal storage. Um, let's come over here, we'll do this one. Mac storage, go like that. Run this one, right? 
basically is the same as the internal storage. I mean, technically it's actually faster on disk test. This one comes up a little bit different, but between the two of them, we can basically say it's at least as fast as the internal storage on the Mac. It also does have active cooling. It has active cooling. There is sound, there is sound, it, but you can't hear it. I'm gonna put the, this is touching the microphone now. See, can you hear it? It's subhuman hearing level. So honestly, that's that. I don't, I actually legitimately don't need to do more. Um, what do I think about it? Now there are the two variants. Uh, it's your pick, which one you get. If you wanna get uh, Thunderbolt 5 speeds, then you buy the one that has the Thunderbolt 5, the individual Thunderbolt 5. Um, that's, you pick that one. It just says one drive and it's Thunderbolt 5. My Mac here is a Mac mini base, base model. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to have Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabit, Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabit uh, times two. I'm happy with that. That's fast. That's incredibly fast. It's faster than the internal uh, of my drive, at least as fast, if not faster. So, I mean, it's running very well. Uh, the thing is silent. I was worried about the cooling solution being noisy because active cooling can be noisy. It's not. It's just enough to, you know, keep it cool without running and being super annoying, obviously. And then, of course, you do have also expansion. So, I mean, it's B-Link. They have a strong reputation. I've done many of their mini PCs. I mean, if you watch my channel, you've seen them. Other people, I'm sure, you've seen B-Link around. They've had, they are very popular in the mini PC space. And, you know, I guess now they're making some Mac mini accessories because they're good at mini stuff. So why not do Mac mini stuff? So very good. It's a good product. I like it. Very good.